Uh, first of all, thanks so much for, for taking the time and coming out and, and uh, like listening to us. I appreciate it. Um, so, I, I, my name is Shankar Sahai. I'm the founder of Green Bean Recycle. Um, just to give you a quick idea of what, what Green Bean is, Green Bean is a software and technology company uh, that will increase recycling rates by eliminating the paper receipt out of uh, existing reverse vending machines and we have put a gaming component to recycling. Uh, reverse vending machines are those machines you see in the grocery stores, but they have a paper receipt to them. So uh, what are we solving today? Today, over 8 million tons of bottles and cans end up in the landfill. $5 billion worth of uh, tipping fees, container handling fees, and va valuable recyclable material end up in, uh, going to waste. So let's just talk about today's like inefficient recycling solution. Uh, let's talk about the blue bin. In the blue bin, you put all your bottles and cans and your cardboard and your plastic and your glass. The first thing that happens in the blue bin once the recycling truck picks it up is that glass breaks. So 40% of glass ends up in the landfill because of that. But more, more importantly is that glass is one of the biggest contaminants because it sticks to plastic. So once it goes, uh, after it's being picked up by the, by the garbage truck, it goes to a material recovery facility and it goes onto the tipping floor where the garbage truck basically, basically dumps all your recyclable material from your blue bin onto a tipping floor. So the contamination even goes further than that. And then after that, it gets sorted. So the poor quality does get sorted and it goes to a reprocessor and it goes to a manufacturer. However, reverse vending machines are actually really intelligent machines. They not only know what beverage container it is because it scans each UPC, it also puts each container in a separate bin. So everything is separated. However, and so and on top of that, you know, because it's separated, it produces the highest quality of material because there's no contamination rate. So it goes right from the machine, it goes to a baling facility or material processor, and then it goes right to the manufacturer. And the manufacturer actually pays a higher dollar for that material because of the low contamination rates on it. But there's some drawbacks to the reverse vending machine today. They're only restricted to grocery stores because you need a store clerk to take your paper receipt and give you your money back. You know? But you know, we live in the 21st century. If you, if you can take my five cents when I buy my six pack, why can't you put it back into my account somehow? So, so we, that, that's where Green Bean comes in. So Green Bean's solution is that we have eliminated the paper receipt process. So the money goes right to your, to your PayPal account. In MIT's case, it goes to your tech cash account. Or you can donate to a charity of your choice, which is uh, the Nature Conservancy or MITE, the MIT Energy Initiative. We have chosen two of those. That means these machines can be placed anywhere that sells a beverage. So you can increase recycling rates and increase the highest quality of recyclable material. Uh, and within seconds of recycling your bottle or can, there's an instant real-time update that on your online account showing what you've uh, removed from the landfill and your energy savings. And then, one, one of the things that we've also done is that one of the restrictions that have happened with these, uh, these reverse vending machines in the, in the grocery stores is that they only take the, material, the bottles and cans that that particular store sells. You know? So if you go to a stop and shop and you put a Sam Adams bottle in it, it'll reject it because uh, the UPC is not being scanned into it. So that's kind of a pain too. So we programmed the machine to take in everything. So it, take, it also takes in the containers that don't have a five cent uh, of, um, uh, value to it. So the water bottles, the sport drinks, the iced tea drinks that don't have a five cent value here, but they have it in, Mass in Maine, New York, and Connecticut. So we take those in too. To get, uh, you won't get your five cents, but you will also get um, your energy savings. So that's one of the unique things about our machine is that we want to increase recycling rates by taking in all the containers. So our machine right now is at the, is at the, the MIT Student Center. Um, is actually a, okay, it's, it's at the MIT Student Center. Uh, this, this picture is actually a, a uh, uh, rendering of the machine when we were trying to get it to the, to the uh, wrap maker. So it looks exactly like this, actually. Uh, but th there's a touch screen on it. We take uh, plastic bottles, glass bottles, aluminum cans. We don't take liquor bottles or wine bottles. The machine will reject those because of the UPC, we don't have those scan uh, programmed in. At some point, we will have it so that you will take soup cans in, wine bottles. But we're trying to just implement this program into this. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and 
give you a quick demo of uh, our website. So this is our website live right now, and that is real-time data within seconds of recycling a bottle or can. That's what's been removed from MIT. Um, and energy savings is from the environmental protection uh, eye worm calculator. Um, if you click on this, um, it will show you who the top recyclers are. Um, and when you sign in, um, you I'm not the best typer. Oh, uh, French keyboard. Oops. <laughs> Oops, sorry. It's okay. It's the out. <laughs> change it to U.S. keyboard. <laughs> I think it's my oh. keyboard might make it. Yeah. Actually, let me just try one more time. Our, uh, our website. You can also then uh, uh, click on your friend or whoever is recycled uh, and you can compare yourself against each other to see who's recycled the most. Um, and you know we have a challenge. So you can also see how much, how many uh, hours you have uh, saved to power a 36 inch TV, a laptop, a cell phone, um, items like that. Um, you can also create teams. So right now we have a challenge going on. Recycle 100 containers or more uh, by Tuesday, and you'll win a, an iTunes gift card, a $10 gift card. Um, so the fraternities will create a team that are recycling against each other. Um, so right now you'll see that Kappa Sigma has removed 2,750 containers. Um, if you click on their team, you'll see the top recyclers. Um, com you can compare it to your own team as well. So we also do have a dorm on there as well, and you can create any sort of team you want with any of your friends, any of your classmates. We're trying to get the sports people on board as well, so they can create teams. We're just trying to promote the competitive, you know, aspect to it. But yet again, through recycling and through you actually disposing of your containers properly. Right. And uh, and then in the, in the trends page, we have some interesting data of uh, by team. Uh, who has removed it? Yeah, you can actually um, see it through energy savings, through plastic, glass, or aluminum, depending on like what materials you have. For instance, if you see Kappa Sigma was the first one, but if you go to plastic, it's significantly less. If you go to aluminum, however, you can tell exactly <laughs> what they're kind of drinking. <laughs> now, it's interesting statistics that you can actually have through colleges as well. We're trying to have Tufts on uh, in a couple of months, so you can actually, you'll be able to see what MIT versus Tufts is doing. We also have a couple of other universities in the works right now, so we're trying to promote friendly competition between universities, but yet again, statistics that they can use to show how sustainable they are. We could do that for fraternities, as well as certain dorms and certain buildings. So we're trying to show exactly where people are recycling, how much, and how much energy is saved to power certain things. Right, and, and there's also we've we've also added uh, a, a, for users. This is a kind of a uh, a work in progress. We uh, we added that just to see how how many people are recycling, um, you know. And then if you want to send your money over, this is where you you uh, you come over and you when you press send money, the money goes to where you want it to go. Just to tell you how the process works is that when you register on our website, we ask you to give us your phone number. Um, and then when you give us your phone number, when you're on the website, you can create teams and do what you need to do. And then you walk away and then you think of the machine like an ATM. You just type your phone number in, put your bottle of can in, and you walk away. 
the only time your phone number is ever used is when you call us and you tell us that you have a problem and we ask you for your phone number and we ask, then we will be able to look up your account. But we don't have like full access to any of that information. So, uh, but uh, in general, you know, the whole idea is that uh, we're modernizing the bottle bill. You know, the five cent regulation here in Massachusetts and the 11 bottle bill states have always had that paper receipt process to them. And we've modernized that whole aspect behind it. And on top of that, we, are, you know, we know that recycling is kind of a chore, it's kind of a pain. Uh, and you need to see your impact, to see what you've done, um, and see that you know, what efforts you've done is actually being a positive impact. And if your small impacts make a larger impact in the community you live in, it makes you want to go and recycle more. So Christine's going to talk about um, how to participate in the program. and. Uh, so I saw a quick question, but I guess we'll just hold them off until the end, that's okay. So it's three small steps. You register either on the machine, that is right over there, five minutes away, or you can register online. Um, you recycle, we need to adhere to the mass law of refunds, so the plastic bottles, yet again, are not necessarily getting the five cents, but they can help you participate in different challenges and give you additional incentives. So you get a result online, but we're working on an iPhone app as well, coming soon. So why should you participate? You in particular, um, we're trying to provide you convenience. You don't need to, you know, drag it to your superstore or stop at shop that does not refund you for anything that is not sold in there. You just come down here in your little basement or anywhere else that you guys want to put the machine. It's convenient for you to just dispose of all of your containers. It promotes sustainability. You guys can see your energy savings. You can see your dorm energy savings. Finally, you actually get the money back. So if you actually recycle around 40 containers, I mean, things that you might drink in a day, in a week, um, that will fund, uh, if you put it to your tech cash, that will actually fund a washer and a dryer for your laundry. Things that you already consume, but you get your money's worth from it. So, I have one last thing that I forgot to have mentioned. One of the greatest benefits of, of the bottle bill is that because you pay the five cents for it, when you have this machine here, the beverage distributor, who's Coke or Pepsi or whoever it is, actually owns that material. So that means they actually pick up the material for free at no cost to MIT. So MIT actually pays a little bit to move these materials. And then the quality of the material is still poor when it does get to the manufacturer. So that's a huge benefit for MIT is that this material is being picked up at no cost. Uh, and it won't be any of any cost to anyone. Um, so all, all the, what that has to be done when a machine does get on campus is that the material has to be stored in a safe and secure location. And that's about it. So, um, And in the mass law, just to clarify, uh, the Massachusetts Battle Bill gives you five cents for only carbonated drinks. So they won't give you five cents for water, vitamin water, iced tea drinks, so because it's not carbonated. But they're working on getting all that. That's about it. We can take your question. Yeah. Okay. I can start. Um, so what, what, what happens with the materials afterwards, like after you, when you put them in the box? Uh, like you have someone that collects them and then um, you send them to the Yeah, so, so once once it's picked up by uh, our pickup agent, Let it goes. Let me just say first real quick. Once you input it, we actually crush it mm -hmm. and separate it. So we also uh, reduce the amount of times that the machine needs to be emptied or any of your other containers need to be emptied. Yeah, so it's not like we're traveling with air. It's all. so. Plastic, uh, plastic bottles is crushed, aluminum is crushed. In the machine we have right now, uh, glass is a soft drop in a separate bin. So it doesn't get crushed, it just drops into a bin. Okay. Uh, but to answer your question, MIT has to empty the machine, store the material in a safe location, um, and what happens is that the material pickup handler comes in and it goes to a facility in Lakeville, which is basically a bailing facility. So it just goes into conveyor belts and has had because it's already sorted over here, it just gets bailed, and then it goes right to manufacturer. So it's not sorted into the facility? No, because the machine does that okay. right here. Okay, okay. So it's always separated. Um, and they stay separated the whole time. So it's the best quality of recyclable material, thus giving you an end result that's the best quality as well. So. Yeah, how much does it cost to put one of these things in somewhere? It costs, the machine costs $14,000. Uh, 
but the the cost is uh, is basically right now MIT is paying between like twenty to thirty dollars a ton to move this material. So that cost is being covered with the savings that you put in with the machine. In addition to that, because we've put the cashless aspect to it, um, you know, we handle all the online transactions and all of the 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 data that goes with the machine. So it's about fourteen thousand dollars. But we can that's because it's got the glass glass soft drop. If you don't want glass, <coughs> if you don't want to collect glass, um, we notice like through the machine, not a lot of glass goes through. Like we have emptied the machine like almost two to three times a week for plastic and aluminum, but not for glass. You know, it's been it's uh, it's just basically hasn't been emptied for so a while. So it'd be a bit cheaper if you actually decide to order without glass. Yeah. So.